I want to share something uh, born of, out of my own personal life with you today that I hope helps you, especially if you haven't placed your life in Christ. And even for those who have trusted Christ, given their lives to Christ, and yet still aren't living in the freedom and joy that Christ came to give you. And I want to hopefully set up an opportunity here for the Holy Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit does because, you know, I can't really do anything. Uh, it's God that does the work. It's God that does the drawing. And as we are here and we are in fellowship and in unity with one another, and as we open the Word today, the Holy Spirit's going to work. He's going to work inside of your mind and inside of your spirit. And, and I'm praying that he helps some of us see things that we've never seen before and realize things we've never seen before. And, uh, the title of this message today is, I had no idea until I met Jesus. I had no idea until I met Jesus. I was born in a spiritual pit. I don't mean a physical pit, I mean a spiritual pit. In a, in a place that was dark, that was confined, a place that was not nice, if you get a picture in your mind of being in the bottom of a deep well where it's completely dark and there's mud on the, the bottom and it's, it's small and confined and you're injured down there in the bottom and that's a good picture of the life that I was born into and the truth is all of us are born into that life and if I could use this just as a metaphor for your mind to see spiritually how we're born although we can talk and walk and see with our eyes and feel with our hands our spirits are dead that's what being born into sin is like and all of us are born that way and and we come into this broken world broken come on and uh, you know it doesn't take us long to realize we start learning what's right and wrong and we start to realize that we don't always do the right thing do we sometimes we think horrible things and we tell lies and we steal things and we do uh, bad stuff and and you know this concept this idea that you know well I'm a good person even though I do bad things well when we look at Holy Scripture God doesn't look at things that way does he he tells each and every one of us that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have been born in a pit. The thing about being born in a pit is that if you have no reference of anything else, you think this is what life is all about. You think life is darkness and muddiness and smelliness and confinement and, and being broken. And, and so what do we do in this situation? We, we do everything we can to make the most of it. And we see people that live this kind of roller coaster life where they, they feel like they're okay for a while and then circumstances can happen or maybe it's not even circumstances and they go right down into this this the despair and the, they want to just give up and come to the point of just like why am I even alive what is the point of all of this and this is the life that's lived inside of the pit and just imagine that I was born in this pit and I'm down in this darkness and I'm trying to make the most of this situation because I have no idea that I'm in a pit I have no idea that above me is something wonderful. And so I try to make it and I try to do well and, and there are times when I feel good, like I, maybe I can make this work and there are other times where I just want to give up. But in the midst of it all, I'm really not making any progress and I'm not living to the full extent of the abundant life that God has for me because I don't even know it exists until one day a light shines from above me. Can you just picture you're in this dark pit and you don't even know that it's dark because you've never seen light. You don't know that it's muddy because you've never been on dry ground. You don't know that it's smelly because you've never smelled fresh air. All you know is this pit and all of a sudden the light comes on above you and it begins to illuminate the truth that you're down in this pit. And while you're in this pit, you look above and, and you can see beyond and see that there's a world above you you never even knew was there. And then you see the man holding the light above you. And you cry out to him, save me, help me, help me, get me out of this pit. You begin to realize you don't belong in the pit and that somebody can maybe lift you up out of this. And of course, that man above you is Jesus. And he calls out to you and he says, do you want me to save you? And you say, yes, please save me. And, and, and so Jesus, he begins to descend down into the pit. Notice he doesn't stay up there where it's nice. He comes down there in the mud and the muck where you are. 
And he crawls down in the pit, and, and you desperately try to help him. You want to help him get you out. The problem is you're in such a condition that you have no ability to help him. In fact, the more you struggle trying to fix yourself, the harder it is for him to get you out of there. What you really need to do is just lay still and let the Savior save you. And Jesus gets down in the mud and he gets his knees in the mud and his hands in the mud and he, he gently puts his arms underneath you and he picks you up and he's got strength you didn't know a, a man could have. And, and he puts you on his shoulder and he begins to climb out of the pit and, and the hole that was once small is getting bigger before you as you reach the top and he sets you up on the top and he, he, he lays you out and he begins to clean you up and, and, and heal you up and feed you and, and take care of you until he can do this one thing first and that is set your feet on solid ground. You see, when you're born in the pit, you have no idea what solid ground feels like. David said in Psalms 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and he heard my cry and he brought me up out of the pit. He brought me up out of the mire. He set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. The Holy Spirit brought me here today to shine the light on your life and let you know that you may have never stood on a solid place in your life. You may have spent all of your time in a condition where the ground beneath you, the foundation of your life is unstable and it moves with everything that comes at life. But when you meet Jesus... He will set your feet upon a foundation that cannot be moved. Somebody say amen to that. I pray that you begin to understand as I unpack this word here, the foundational life, the structured life that Christ wants you to stand upon, something you may have never experienced before in your life. I remember the day that I gave my life to Christ, and as I began to learn about Jesus and began to worship him and try to study the word, and I began to pray, I began to realize that there is a foundation to my faith. I had heard it talked about in church. I had her sang songs about the solid rock upon which I stand, but you will never really know what it's like until you yourself let the Savior set your feet upon a solid rock. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, this says, it says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It's never even entered into the heart of a man all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, God revealed him through the Spirit. For it is by the Spirit that God searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among you knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of the man? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God. You know what happens when Jesus picks you up and you say yes to Christ is that your spirit comes alive. You see, the light is the Holy Spirit waking your spirit up so that you can begin to see that you're in a pit and that you need a Savior, amen? That, that there's, a, there's a reason to cry out to a Savior because you really don't have it all together like you thought you had it all together. Anybody with me? Oh, you've been down that road. Oh, I got my money going now. I'm making good money and I'm doing good, but then you can't stop spending. And, and now you need another raise because you're behind on your bills. And uh, oh, you feel like, oh, I, I got 5000 back on my taxes. And then in three months, you spent $5,000 and got no money. Now you're in a hole again. Is anybody with me? You know, we keep saying that I've got this figured out. I got relationships figured out. I got my health figured out. I just got to buy this one special drink and I drink it every morning and I'm never going to get sick until you get sick, right? Because we don't really have it all figured out. We desperately need help, and it is the light of the Holy Spirit that shines upon us today that shows us that we desperately need Jesus. I want to read to you in Matthew chapter 7. David in Psalms 40 said, he set my feet upon a rock. I want you to read, uh, listen to this. Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and yet it did not fall. Whew, that's good stuff. For it had been founded on the rock. 
Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Many people build their life on sand, and they don't even realize that there's solid rock they could build it upon. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about what it's like to have a, a life that's built upon the sand. The thing about a life that's built upon the sand is that it may seem firm at first. It may seem like it's uh, standing and it's pretty good, but the first time the rains come and the floods come, first time trials come, tribulations come, things happen in life, it gets washed out from underneath you and everything that you've built upon, it falls. Come on, your career can fall, your relationships can fall, your health can fall, your ministry can fall, your mental stability can fall, every aspect of your life. And yet today, because people don't know that there's a solid place to stand, they keep building their life upon the sand. They build it upon the world system. You see, the world has a way of doing things, and everybody thinks that we need to do it the way the world says we should do it. So some people build their life on money. I mean, that's what they live for is the money. I used to work for a young man that owned a company and was very successful, and he was about the money. That's what he was all about is making them dollars, you know. And, and, and he thought if he made the dollars, that he could buy whatever he wanted, do whatever he wanted, and that would make him happy. The problem is uh, dollars don't always stay around. Have you noticed that for every dollar you make, the world is trying to steal two from you? The rent goes up, or the car breaks down, or the dishwasher went kaput, or, or just somebody needed some money. I mean, the world is constantly trying to take away the money from you. And listen, you might have some money in your pocket today, and you might feel secure in your money, but there could come a time that you lose everything you've got. It wasn't not too long ago that the stock market crashed, and a lot of us lost money in our 401Ks, and a lot of people lost everything that they had saved. And uh, elderly people who were enjoying retirement had to go back to work because money is like sinking sand. You can't trust it to build a life on. People, they look at the social morals of the world, you know, like, well, uh, you know, there's a lot of people standing on uh, pedestals saying this is right and this is wrong and that's right and that's wrong. And, and then you get into politics and this, oh, us over here on this side, we're the righteous ones. And, and y'all over there on that side, y'all are the unrighteous ones. And of course, everybody feels the same way about the opposite side. Like my group is right and your group is wrong. Can I just tell you a secret? Um, the moment you start putting like right and wrong and morals in the power of human beings, you're in a bad spot because you, you don't even agree with yourself. Come on, like what you believe is right today is not what you believed 20 years ago. And some of you have changed your mind since this morning. How can, how can truth be that flaky? You can't trust in the morals of this world. What society says is right and wrong. There has to be something better than that. For if there is no God and there is no morals that come from God, then really there's no morals at all. And all, none of this really matters, does it? But people trust in social morals. They trust in knowledge. They think, boy, we're just learning. We're just so smart. We're so wise. We know. We can see far away into the universe, yet we can't find our car keys. <laughs> you know, it's just that, that that's the way it is in the world. It's like we, we feel like if we could just know so much, then uh, we would have everything that we need. We can knowledge our way into a solid foundation. The problem is that, you know, uh, people who trust in knowledge and believe in knowledge and want to measure and see everything without faith, and they don't believe in spiritual things, only what they can sense or see with their five senses. And, you know, the, the problem with that is it's never ending because although what you know today you may think is true, tomorrow you will learn something else and you'll realize that what you thought yesterday was true wasn't really true. Do you understand what I'm saying? This happens in science all the time. They say things like, we used to think that, but then we discovered that this. And if you're paying attention, what you'll know is 20 years from now, they'll say, well, we used to think that, but we know this. And I don't have anything against science except for the fact that when you trust in knowledge alone and you don't have all knowledge, you're on a sinking foundation. You can't even believe what you know because there might be something else that changes what you know today. But people build their lives upon this world system, and the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Don't trust what the world tells you. It's not a good foundation to build your life upon. Some people build their life upon their circumstances. Like they feel, they say things like, you know, as long as I got my health, 
That's a sad thing to build your life on because what if you get sick? Oh, I'm never going to get sick. Yeah, uh, come on. I tell you something, all of us are going to die sometime. You didn't want to hear that this morning, did you? <laughs> People say, as long as I have my uh, career, what happens when they lay you off? Your foundation just went right out from under you. People say, as long as I have my family, what happens? God forbid that a car crash happens and your family is gone. You wouldn't be the first person that that happened to. If your life is built upon these temporary things that can be taken from you, it is a life built upon the sand. Oh, and here's, here's a good one right now. A, a, a lot of people are living on the foundation of their emotions. How do I feel today? Uh, what are my feelings like? We're, everybody's stuck in their feelings today to the point that there's no discipline anymore. People don't just do what they should do. They do what they feel like doing. Come on. Let me tell you something. You will never accomplish anything good if you just do what you feel like doing. Because your feelings will go all over the place. And, and, and they will take you everywhere. And can I tell you something? Oftentimes your feelings will lie to you. Your feelings will tell you that your life is screwed up and terrible and awful and you need to just let everybody know it. When if you just start paying attention, you'll realize that sometimes your feelings are lying to you and it's not as bad as your feelings say they are. And you might just need to eat a, a Snickers bar or you might need to go to sleep or something, take a nap or something. And when you wake up, you'll realize that you can't live by your emotions. I feel sorry for people that, that they, they feel a certain way and they think that's the truth and the reality of life. I got up this morning and I feel bad, so life is bad, and I need to make sure everybody else feels bad with me. Come on, I'm talking to somebody out there. You need to stop waking up and assessing how you feel and start waking up and realizing that's not a good way to build your day. It's not a good thing to build your life upon how you feel because your feelings will come and they will go. People say things like, oh, it's all about my happiness as long as I'm happy. Uh, you know what? Happiness comes and goes too, and that's not the purpose of Christianity, to take away every problem you have so that you are happy all the time. And The truth is when we don't have any problems, we're not happy any happier than when we have problems. A lot of times we turn into spoiled little brats that whine about the little things now. It's like God gives you $1,000, but it's in 20s, and God, I wanted it in big bills, you know? It's like we whine about the little things. Happiness is not the point of life. That's not a good foundation because there's going to be days when you don't feel happy. There's going to be days when you feel happy. But I don't trust my feelings. I don't build my world on my feelings because my feelings will change. That's like sand that's going to sink around me the first time something bad comes. I've said it before. If you, There's people in my life that, man, their world is just falling apart. And they come and have to tell me how terrible their world is and and. and if I was to offer them in that moment a $100 bill, their whole world would change. Their eyes would brighten up and they'd be happy. And if your whole world will change because of a $100 bill, your world is not that bad. Stop it, please. Stop building your life upon sinking sand. Stop thinking that the way you feel is what you need to build your life upon. It's a struggle to build your life on the sand. What happens is you can do everything right. You can build the walls of your life, the relationships of your life, the health of your life, the mentality of your life. You can build even your ministry just right and have it all looking so good. And the first problem that comes along, it washes all that stuff away and you're left with nothing to stand on. Come on, are you with me today? God lifted me out of the pit, David said, and he set my feet upon solid ground. If you've never known what solid ground feels like, you might think living on sand is the way to go. But I came to tell somebody that when you've met Jesus, he will set your feet on something that cannot be moved. Can you give him a hand of praise today? Hallelujah, Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You know what that's telling you? That the only firm foundation there is is Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's the way God created the world is for us to be in relationship with Jesus, for him to save us and set our feet upon a solid rock. So why is it that God is such a solid foundation? Why is faith in him such a solid foundation? And what does that even mean to stand on a solid foundation? You remember when Jesus was hanging out with the disciples and he asked them, who do people say I am? And one of them said, well, some people say you're the prophet Elijah and others say that you're Jonah. And Peter was the one that said, 
When Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Peter said, you're the Christ. You're the Savior. You're the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. You know what the rock was? The rock was the confession that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You know what standing on solid rock is? It's when your spirit realizes and you admit to the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He's the one at the top of your pit with a light on. He's the only one that can lift you out of it. And if you say yes to him, yes, save me. I can't do anything. I can't help you in any way. But if you come down down here where I am and lift me up Jesus I'll accept what you've done on my behalf Jesus was saying that simple confession that simple trust in him will set your life on something solid that cannot be moved why is it solid today because God is all-powerful come on now God's never ran into a problem or an enemy or a situation that he can't fix with a snap of his fingers or speaking his word just like that there's nobody he can come up against come on now yeah, there's been, there's been time and times in my life where, you know, I thought I might have to protect my family. And, and uh, you know, if it's someone who's a little smaller than me, I might be thinking about handling it with my hands, Harold, you know. Uh, but if they're bigger than me, I might have to go for, uh, you know, something that put, you put bullets in. Uh, or I'm looking around at a table leg I might be able to rip off and use. Whatever you got to use, you know. But there are some situations where I'm not big enough and I'm not bad enough to do anything about. Can I tell you that God has never ran into a situation that he can't handle just like that? We're so afraid of bankruptcy. We're so afraid of being laid off. We're so afraid of losing things and death. We're so afraid of cancer and all of these things. The truth is those words don't scare God. He's not confounded or confused by those things. God has power over everything. Come on now. The thing about the storms, you know, sometimes the storms of life are bigger than we are. It's like sometimes we, can, we got problems we can handle, and I, you know, I can handle this situation. Other times they come upon us and they're so big, it's like staring at the ocean. You're like, I, I can't even grasp how big this problem is. This storm is so huge, I don't, there's no way I can handle it. And yet God has never come upon a storm that he's not completely in control over. Come on, he can do things like have you walk on water right in the middle of the storm. He can do things like speak to it and make it go away. God has all power. Not only is God all powerful, God is all knowledgeable. Can I tell you something? God sees the whole picture from beginning to end. He already knows how it's going to turn out. He already knows what you're going to eat for lunch today. Some people would say, well, that means God's forcing me to eat this for lunch. No, God just knows in advance what choice you're going to make about lunch. Can I help you understand that? How God can know the future and the past and all. Let me tell you how uh, I can understand that. If we go eat Mexican food today, I can guarantee you, I can foretell that my wife is going to say no beans, double rice. Because I know her. It's not my choice that she's not eating beans. That's her choice. Beans are good. I don't know what's wrong with her. But I know what choice she's going to make. Doesn't mean I made her make that choice, does it? God can know what you're going to do, and it's still your choice. That's why God is never taken off guard by the things that you do. There's never a situation where God goes, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, come on. Some of you had a knock on the door you weren't expecting. It wasn't good news. Some of you went to the mailbox like, <laughs> and you opened up the first letter and went, oh. What, how am I going to take care of this? Right? We're just human. We get caught off guard. God never has a situation in heaven where he says, I wasn't expecting that. God never gets new information either. He never says, well, you know what, Pastor Cain, let's do it this way, and, and this will probably work out. And then all of a sudden he finds out something else. Some angel gives him some new news, and he goes, wait a minute. That changes everything. That never happens with God. If he says it the first time, that's all there is. God knows everything, so he's never caught off guard. He never changes his mind. God doesn't change. Hallelujah. People change. I change. When I was 20 years old, I was 120-something pounds. I was what you call skinny. And I know I'm still not fat, but there's parts of me that are getting bigger. It's not that funny. <laughs> I mean... Uh, I mean, uh, things don't say the same with us. We change. We change our minds. And, and can I be honest? Some days I'm really nice. 
And some days I'm not so nice because I'm just human. And I, I try to be nice all the time, but I, I'm not nice all the time. I've changed my opinion on things, and, and, and life has changed, and I'm not always the same person that people expect me to be. And that's one of the problems with being a pastor is people expect you to kind of be at this level just like this. And I'm trying to tell people pastors are just people. They're messed up like everybody else, and you ought to be glad about that because it means they're not expecting you to be up here at some special level. You can just be you and believe in Jesus. Relax a little bit. We change. God doesn't change. He is steadfast, immovable. Oh, there have been times in my life where I'm like, oh, I'm going to start eating right. Steadfast, rock solid. I like lemon pies from Whataburger. That's my problem. I got two parts of my brain. One of them says eat right, and the other one says lemon pie. <laughs> Ooh, lemon pies from Whataburger. Hallelujah. Jesus. That's another good thing in heaven. There won't be any calories or fats up there. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm immovable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save money, Pastor Kane. I'm going to put exactly this amount aside, just like Dave Ramsey says I'm supposed to do. After I buy this one more thing that I think I need. Come on, anybody in the house. I'm not steadfast. I'm not immovable. I can be pushed around by life. I can be moved by life. But God is steadfast. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change his tune. He doesn't change his word. He is who he is. He was that way 10,000 years ago. He'll be that way 10,000 years from now. You can rely, you can trust on this steadfast, immovable character of God. You want One of the best parts about God's character that's immovable is that he always loves me. If you get anything today, get this. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been or what family you were born into or what kind of money you make or if there's a record of you on DPS down there. I don't care where you've been. God loves you. He's always loved you from before the day you were born. He will always love you. Nothing will change that. Hallelujah. God is crazy about you. He loves you. And God keeps his word. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. You know what that means? That sometimes even when you intend to tell the truth, you didn't tell it. You say, I'll be there in 10 minutes, and you hit traffic. Come on. You're not God. You say, I'm, I'll, I'll loan you the money, and then all of a sudden you look at the bank, and the money's not in there, and you, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I, can't, I don't have it. You say, well, you know what? I'm going to stay on this job, and I promise you I'll be here through the rest of the year. And all of a sudden something changes, and you've got to move on. You can't keep promises because you're not God. You don't know what's coming. You don't have power over every situation. And if you build your life on the stuff of this earth, sinking sand is what you're building your life upon. God is the only one who is reliable. And a faith that is built upon God is a faith that is on a firm foundation. Let me give you a little description of what living on a solid rock is like. Have you ever seen, uh, well, first of all, a lot of people think on a solid rock means that there's no problems in my life. It means that God just is taking care of everything. I don't have any problems. But if you've been a Christian for a long time, do you know that Christians have problems? Do you know Christians screw up and Christians make mistake? And that's not a black mark on the faith. That's the beauty of it, that God loves us anyway. Come on. Hallelujah. So uh, life as a child of God is not like a bed of roses where God moves every problem out of your way. It's more like, have you seen the weatherman who's out there when the hurricane's coming? Have you seen him? And it's like he's like standing on the ground that's not moving because the hurricane ain't moving the ground. It's moving, the gasoline signs flying behind his head, and, and, and there's all kinds of debris and tree branches and stuff everywhere, and his hair is flying around, and he's just, he's just trying to hold on. Everything around him is unstable and dangerous except the ground beneath his feet. Being a Christian is this. My world can go into chaos. My finances can have problems. My relationships can have difficulties. I can face problem after problem, but I'm standing on something that will not be moved, and nothing can take that away from me. Hallelujah to his name. So it looks like this. If I lose all of my money, I still got Jesus. His promises are true. His word is true. His love for me is true. Nothing can take that away from me.
That if I was to lose all of my friends and family, I still got Jesus. My faith in him is not shaken and nothing can separate me from that. I'm standing on something solid. That if I was to even lose my life today, it wouldn't matter because I'm stepping out of this one, which I got a pretty good life, but the next one God's got for me is even better and I'm going to go into the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. In other words, my life looks like this. I've got a foundation that cannot be moved. It cannot be changed. It is God's love for me and I'm standing upon it. Come on, are you with me today? Some of you today may have never known what it's like to have a kind of life that it doesn't matter what happens around you or to you, there's something in your life that will not be moved. And Jesus wants to give you that life. It's not about religion. It's not about you covering up tattoos or, or cutting your hair or stopping cussing. And it's none of that stuff. Stop thinking that. You can't work your way or act your way into salvation. Just be you and believe in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will take care of everything else. Can I promise you that? That as you seek God, God is going to form you into the shape of Jesus. Just relax in that. It's not about religion. It's not even about going to church. Harold, I didn't get saved because I came to church. I come to church because I got saved. There's a difference between the two. Come on. I got saved in the driveway at my parents' house in the car late at night. That's where I got saved. And it made me want to come to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life will never be consistent on this side of heaven. Things will happen. Problems will happen. Life says, I hate you. God says, I love you. Life says, I'm taking your house today. God says, that's okay. I'll give you a better one. Life may say, I'm taking your health. And God says, I'll make you whole. Life may say, I'm taking your money. God says, I'll supply all of your needs according to my riches. Life may say that you're all alone. God says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Life says you're a failure, but God says you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves you. Life says, I'll destroy you. God says, be of good cheer. I've already overcome everything in this world. Life says you're a nobody. God says you're my child. Life says, look at the bad things you've done. God says, look at the good things Jesus done for you. Life says, I'll take your life. God says, that's okay. I've given you eternal life. Woo! There's some things about my life that can't be changed. Hallelujah. Life changes, but God remains the same. He loves me and he has me in his possession and nothing can change that. I am secure in him. You see, in closing, I want you to know that when I was in the pit, I had no idea what it meant to stand on a solid place, to have a life that had something in it that was foundational that this world couldn't take away. That one moment, one accident, a bad economy, whatever it would be, it couldn't take it away. That the winds might blow and I might have to bend, but I would never break because what was underneath me cannot be moved. I waited patiently for the Lord. He heard my cry and he lifted me up out of the pit and he set my feet upon a solid rock. And that is where I stand today. I'm not going to lie. There are some times when the winds blow and it gets really scary. And when it does, you know what I do? I don't freak out. I hold on to my foundation. I hold on to my foundation. It's what I trust in and what I believe in. Here's the thing. When I was in the pit, I had no idea how amazing life could be. I had no idea what solid ground felt like until he lifted me up and he set my feet upon it. Oh, how good it is to trust in Jesus. Oh, how good it is to say, God, I'm broken, I'm messed up. I'm down here in this pit and I have no ability to help you get me straight. But if you would save me, if you would please save me and to feel the hands of Christ reach down into my dirty life, and get down there where I was and to love me even when I was broken and at my worst how he loved me and he picked me up and he saved me and he set my feet upon a solid rock and can I tell you something I'm still nowhere close to perfect but I got Jesus and you can't take that away from me so I want to ask you today are you tired of a life that's built upon the sand are you tired of a life that's built upon money or the things of this world, are you tired of a life that's built upon 
your emotions? Are you tired of it being up and down? And it seems like when you get things going a certain way and, and it's just everything's just heading in the right direction and all of a sudden one bad day, one bad decision, one bad thing wipes it all away and you realize you had built everything upon an unstable ground. If you're tired of living that way today, I want you to know that God wants to set your feet upon a solid rock. A solid rock. And this solid rock doesn't require you to be good. It doesn't require you to improve your behavior. It requires you to just trust in Jesus. Come on. You can just continue to be you. You don't have to go buy a coat. And you don't have to wear a preacher's haircut. You don't, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Just be you and trust Jesus to save you. Amen. Because you know what? God likes you. He loves you. And what he wants you to do is just be you and let him save you today in Jesus' name. So if you'd all just bow your heads for just a moment, close your eyes. I want to pray for you today. While we pray, I want you to, I want you to realize that to be saved is not to become a member of a church. It's not to buy a Bible. It's not to do, it's not to have a cross necklace. It's first to believe, to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. And when you believe, it's to turn to Him. See, when you turn to Him to save you, what you're saying is, I'm turning away from me saving myself. That life is not about me making everything right and fixing everything. That I come to the place, God, where I realize I can't fix stuff especially the important stuff. And, and so I'm turning away from self-salvation to Jesus. So we believe and we turn to Jesus and then we accept what Jesus has done for us. Do you know what Jesus has done for you? He came to this world and he lived a perfect life. In other words, he was tempted just like you and I are, but he never lied, he never stole, he never cheated, he never did a thing wrong. And that earned him some wonderful things which he wants to give to you if you just believe in him. Not only that, but because we have sinned, Jesus went to the cross and he died to pay the penalty for our sin. You see, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is that Jesus died for our sin. And if we just accept those things in our life, the Bible says we're saved that we've been lifted out of a pit and now we have something that we have that's foundational, that we believe in, that cannot be moved. People can't force me to change my mind about Jesus. They can't stop me from praying. They can't stop me from knowing him and believing in him and trusting him and placing my life in him. That's my foundation today. So today, if you believe, if you really believe in your heart and you turn to Christ and say, Jesus, I can't, I can't fix me, I can't save myself, so I ask you to save me. And I accept what you've done for me. I accept your sacrificial death upon the cross in my place. I realize that you took the pain that should have been for me and I accept that on my behalf so that I can be free in you. So I don't have to carry the guilt or the burden or the worry any longer. I receive that today, the forgiveness of my sins. And I thank you, Jesus. Can I make you a promise not because of emotion or because we're in a church on Sunday, but because the Bible says that if you have confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's God's promise to you today. You have a firm foundation that you can stand on now. You can, you can, no matter what happens to you, no matter what winds blow and come your way, no matter what difficulties come your way, you can know that you are in Christ, that your life here on earth is in his hands, and that your eternity in the next one is in his hands, all because you believed in Jesus today. What an amazing promise. He lifted me out of the pit, out of the mire, and he set my feet upon a solid.